call in the of uh, the options that we have for analyzing statically indeterminate systems, the flexibility model is one such, and we can remove the redundant reactions and then uh, successively replace them. That's what we're going to pursue here. Remember, recall that we've got a third degree indeterminate system, but we're not going to focus on the axial indeterminacy and just focus on the shear in the moment. And as such, then, the we're going to end up removing <coughs> this fixed support over here at the right. And that means that we're going to have a degree of freedom associated with translation at that end that we will call degree of freedom one. And then we'll have uh, the rotation out here. And we'll call that degree of freedom two. Right now we're going to use the global coordinate system, Cartesian coordinate system, for assigning the positive directions and other techniques. You might not want to do that, but in this one we're just going to go ahead and do that and let things fall out uh, where they may. And um, looking ahead here, then we know that the displacement in the one direction will turn out to be zero. That would be the translation. And that the displacement in, in the rotation at the end needs to also be zero in order to conform with the fixed end that we actually have out here. <clears throat> right, so we'll come back now to our full original system, the fixed fixed with the concentrated load, and we will then strip off then the reaction out the end, put the real structure on, let it curve, and dis, uh, displace accordingly. And in that system, then we want to go calculate the displacements that we have now released. And in that primary system, then that translation would be called delta one zero for the one for the degree of freedom that we're at, and then zero being the situation that we're in, which is the zero or primary loading. And then of course the second uh, displacement that happens would be tilde two zero. In both cases, these will turn out to be ultimately negative signs because they're counter of our coordinate system. Then we will put the redundant reactions back into place, <clears throat> but we will multiply them. Right? You know, it's easier to calculate with just a unit load, so we have to multiply those then by the actual but unknown at this point value of the redundant reaction one. And again, we want to look for the displacements that are there, <clears throat> that would be F11. It's a flexibility coefficient because it's in response to a unit load. And then F2, that's the degree of freedom caused by the unit load at 1. But we still have that other second redundant reaction at work here. We'll need to scale that up after we go and we get that first flexibility F1 caused by the load at 2 and then we got that rotation there's your F22 at work. Right, that's the setup of the model and in the next part we'll go and perform calculations associated with all this.